Hamas put out a document, I think it's a 16 page document that's almost like an explainer on October 7th and also an explainer on uh, Hamas itself. Uh, I wanted to know what you guys thought of that document and if there was anything that you found noteworthy in it. I thought it was an interesting um, document because if you look at Hamas propaganda generally and particularly since um, October uh, 7th, it has been very much directed at um, domestic public opinion, um, Arab public opinion, and to a lesser extent at seeking to um, influence um, Israeli public opinion. What I thought was different about this text, it was uh, published in both Arabic and in English translation, is that Hamas um, also seeks to address an international audience, which is something that as a rule um, they have refrained uh, from doing and when they have done it, have not done particularly well. On, on this occasion, um, I think they were trying to send several messages. First of all, explaining the context of October 7th. In other words, history did not start on October 7th. Um, there's, there's a whole uh, context there that, that led Hamas to the conclusion that it had um, no alternative to conducting these attacks. Um, secondly, it spent a considerable number of time seeking to refute many of the most lurid allegations against um, the movement. You know, for example, featuring um, uh, reports about their actions that have been disproven, such as uh, babies being burnt in ovens and, and beheaded. You know the um, the images Biden saw that don't exist, and so on, and also um, uh, strongly rejecting um, the allegations of of uh, mass rape uh, and and sexual violence, and so on. I mean, they, you know, the the document states that as a matter of moral and religious principle, Hamas is is prohibited from attacking civilians. Well. Um, that may be true as a moral principle and as a religious principle, but of course Hamas does have a record of um, uh, targeting uh, civilians, for example, during the Second Intifada. So on this occasion, it went out of its way in this document um, to seek to demonstrate that it was primarily um, going after uh, military targets. And then the final part of that document is forward-looking um, going back to the earlier discussion about the Houthis, um, here uh, Hamas makes the point um, that we are not fighting Jews uh, and we are not fighting Israelis because of their Jewish faith. Um, we are fighting Israel because of its Zionist policies. And, and so it makes a clear distinction between Judaism and Zionism. And I think given all the accusations um, that Hamas is a genocidal movement, no different from ISIS, uh, dedicated, you know, to uh, slaughter Jews uh, everywhere. I think they, um, they've they gotten the message that these are the accusations against them and they seek to um, uh, refute them. And they basically um, uh, finally emphasize that the only solution here is um, implementation of the Palestinian right to self-determination, uh, uh, ceasefire, holding Israel accountable. And crucially, they call on the International Criminal Court to investigate all allegations um, right. and not just uh, those uh, against their enemies. Um, and there was one more point about, um, uh, about the conclusion. Oh, and they make the point that no leadership can be imposed upon the Palestinians. And this is their response to all these various day after scenarios that are premised on removing um, Hamas from the equation and from any participation in Palestinian political life. They say, I just wanna quote them because it'll be uh, ignored, but I think it's relevant. 
Uh, Hamas affirms that its conflict is with the Zionist project, not with the Jews because of their religion. Hamas does not wage a struggle against the Jews because they are Jewish, but wages a struggle against the Zionists who occupy Palestine. Yet it is the Zionists who constantly identify Judaism and the Jews with their own colonial project and legal entity. It sounds like something I'd say on the show and have said on the show, <laughs> which I'm sure people will use against me. Well, maybe um, you're the author of the document. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> there were a couple mistakes uh, that, that suggested it wasn't English as a first language, so it wasn't just me. Make, just make sure you secured your royalties. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the Hamas I, payroll. I'd make two comments, always being a stickler for the facts. I was looking very carefully in the first part. Do they get their numbers right? And do they get, you know, elementary factual questions, right? Because notoriously, they never did. But this time, the numbers were right. Actually, believe it or not, in some cases, the numbers were understated hmm. when you compare it to conventional estimates of various things. So that was, I thought, a good thing to see, that they were, uh, they were trying to uh, be precise and accurate. Um, the second thing is the point Maureen said, which is actually a very surprising thing, I have to say, namely this issue of them saying, we will cooperate with the ICC, we will yeah. cooperate with investigative bodies. This came up during the current round when the attack occurred in Al Ali Hospital. And uh, Human Rights Watch wrote, put out a report that said the evidence seems to support the claim that that attack was caused by Hamas, a misfired Hamas rocket. And I do know a person in Hamas. And so I emailed him to ask whether he would support an international investigation to confirm who was responsible for that. And his reply came as a surprise to me. He said, yes, of course. Yes, of course. And of course, I ran with that and began to ask Human Rights Watch, why didn't you conduct an investigation in cooperation with Hamas? You say Hamas has critical evidence. You say that, or everybody says, examining the, the actual site of the landing of the rocket is critical to determining who was responsible? Well, Hamas says, we'll let you look at our evidence. We'll let you look at the site. They said, yes, of course. And I was surprised here that again, they said, yes, we're not afraid. We're not afraid. I, I would have been, frankly, I would have been afraid because there can't really be any doubt, I don't think, but, feel free to agree, disagree with me, that atrocities, Hamas atrocities did occur on October 7th. Or am I wrong about that, Moeen? No, uh, that, that sounds right. I think um, probably uh, their perspective is, first of all, that Israel has much more to lose um, than does Hamas. I mean, when is the last time um, that a Hamas leader um, changed plans to go on a shopping spree in London or Paris because of fear of arrest. Um, that's uh, number one. And number two, if they were seen to be obstructing an international investigation, that would make things very difficult for them domestically as well. They also point out in their document the way Israel allegedly killed people on October 7th. They go through those different yes. claims. Yeah, they the actually tanks. quoted, believe it or not, Israeli one newspapers. of the essential sources, one of, no, one of the essential sources, brace yourself, was Mondo Weiss. Oh, yeah, Mondo yeah. Weiss, yeah. And you, and some, and some Israeli newspapers as well, yeah. It's, it's quite, if I may, it's, it's, it's quite possible that um, they have concluded that the, they don't deny that there were killings of civilians. Right. They just they deny like mistakes responsibility for them. They say either it was Israelis or unruly elements or right. crossfire. It's possible that they're genuinely convinced um, uh, that's the case. But I assume there are some people with responsibility for, for the release of this report that know better and nevertheless felt that a... Um, 
impartial, thorough investigation um, would make the Israelis look very, very much worse. Right. Uh, then it does. In contrast, I mean, well, look who's yeah. being accused of genocide in the world's eyes court. I'll make, I want to hear Biana. Yeah, go ahead, Biana. I was going to say, in contrast, that with uh, Israel, which has refused to cooperate right. with any UN investigation into allegations of sexual assault by Hamas on October 7th. Exactly. Yeah. As we know, um, sexual violence and, and armed conflict are our bedfellows, uh, so to speak. Transcultural. And and, and I I find it entirely plausible that there was uh, sexual violence. Um, The real question, I think, um, that that needs to be investigated is whether there was mass organized sexual violence, because that's really the allegation that, you know, no... Um, the New York Times and, and Israeli spokespeople and so on um, are, are, are not condemning the Palestinians because one or two or, or, or three uh, Palestinians had entered into Israel on October 7th, uh, participated in or, or conducted acts of sexual violence. They're saying this was widespread, right. systematic and organized. Exactly. And that I, I, I personally haven't seen any evidence for it. Um, I don't think there is any evidence for it. So let's have an investigation. Um, and if Israel insists on not cooperating with an investigation, I think the stories should be not about Israel's allegations, but about Israel's refusal to cooperate with an investigation. I've said from the beginning that I'm agnostic on the question of rapes and the question of beheadings. Beheadings is gone, by the way. If you look at the ICJ hearings, they no, long, no longer mention the beheading. Okay, yeah. So that's over. And okay, it's, the, it's done its damage. Exactly. 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 As Muin likes to say, uh, their aim is not to convince you. Their aim is to confuse you. Mm. Yeah. If you can sow enough confusion, then you've won. Mm. 